my soul. I can no longer linger in Judea's plain. I must go up to the mountain top. Praise the name of the Lord. My heart is sad crying for thy fullness, Lord, for the breath of heaven has now touched my soul. I can no longer endure this pain. I must cling to the mountain top. presence we thank you for your visitation expressed in that witness of the spirit that you are already begun to do specific works in the lives of your people thank you Lord because of definite works of healing of the body as we know there shall be works of healings of the soul lord we thank you because your people shall never be the same again you have called us you said you have gathered us yourself we have come at your invitation and the time has come for you to move us onto the other side lord we pray this morning that nothing shall tie anybody down in the name of the lord jesus we take authority over issues in the mind. We take authority over issues in the lives of your people. Whatsoever seeks to ground your people will come against them in the name of Jesus. We say the time to be free is now. This is the time for the freedom of the spirit and the soul and the body. For now is our salvation nearer to us than when we first believed. We judge every ungodly spirit. We judge every unclean spirit. We remove their hold in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, brood over us. Brood over us. Sukala Mayanda. Brood over us, Father. We have come to that point in this work 
we need you to brood over us brood over us father blessed be the name of the lord our god in jesus name amen, amen. can we turn to the book of first samuel chapter 7 first samuel chapter 7 i read verse 11 and verse 12 this was an occurrence in the days of the ministry of Samuel. In the days of the ministry of Samuel, he brought forth this word, and it's a portion that is relevant to us that uh, I want to bring forth. Samuel was a judge that judged Israel for certain number of years and in the days he was a judge in Israel the Lord brought forth a mighty work of reform in the midst of his people but at the point in the ministry of Samuel he brought forth this word that I believe is very relevant to us 1 Samuel chapter 7 now read verses 11 and 12 and the men of Israel went out of Mizpeh and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under that car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpeh and Shem and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto had the Lord helped us. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's look again at our theme scripture for this convention. That is Mark chapter 4. We read verse 35 again. Matthew, Mark, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evil was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. By the grace of God, I'll be speaking this morning on the topic, Bringing the Overcomer Church to Fullness. Bringing the Overcomer Church to Fullness. Now, Samuel at a point in the course of his ministry needed to set up a memorial and that point that time of memorial was a turning point in the life and in the ministry of Samuel and the nation of Israel and when he set up that memorial it was a point that they recounted the faithfulness of God unto them and then they looked ahead to God for further faithfulness. The word Ebenezer means up to this point, God has helped us. And brethren, our story is not too much different from this. I will attempt by the help of the Lord to trace the work in Nigeria, the kingdom expression, the national expression of the kingdom work up to the time we are in, because God is saying something very, very sensitive. And I stand in tribulation as I minister, because I know there are implications in what God has said. The Lord gave a theme very uncommon with our previous things. God says, let us do what move over on to the other side but for Samuel 7 12 say hitherto the lord what has helped us so we have experienced the faithfulness of god and we shall attempt to have inside as much as the lord can help us to see this morning into what is god saying unto us what are the definite instructions because i believe that we are going to have a lot of instruction 
at this convention. Please let us take notes. There will be a lot of instruction. And the reason is because whenever God wants to do a new thing, it normally sounds a trumpet. Trumpet is a message, symbolic of a message. And the Bible says, if the trumpet be uncertain in their meanings, who shall prepare for battle? There are some things God said in the witnesses of the Spirit yesterday that it will take the whole of this convention period to be able to expound them. So, expect instructions. The Lord said there will be correction. Expect correction. And at some instances, there shall be rebuke. It is a son that the father loves. That what? He chastises and he rebukes. But the essence is that we have come to this very sensitive point. We must move over to the other side. Now, the Lord has helped us. In Nigeria, to the best of my knowledge, the work of the kingdom has had at least 40 years in expression. But the Lord decided that he would desire the work to have a national expression. Not a national organization, but a national expression. And by his own arrangement, he brought us together in 1989. And by his mercies, we have been having conventions, conferences, leadership meetings, all manner of meetings. But this is the 23rd time that we are having a national convention. And brethren, 23 years in the life of any man is very significant. If you have a child of 23 years old, you should have certain expectations from that child, isn't it? God forbid you have a child who is still looking for admission at 23. Or God forbid you have a child that is still, you know, struggling with GS3 by 23. There are certain expectations as human beings that we have of ourselves, of our children at certain periods and points in time. Brethren, there are expectations that God has from us. God is not a bad businessman. He's a very good businessman. He does not sow where he does not expect to reap. That is the reason why when he sows and he does not see a harvest, he feels very disappointed. I believe that there has been so much investment into the church in Nigeria. Now, the topic is bringing the overcomer church to fullness. And I will explain why the word overcomer is inserted. The reason is because God has a plan, had a plan for the church, but he has a plan for the overcomers. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than what all the dwelling places of Jacob because glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. And eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that wait for him. Isaiah 64 and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Now God has helped us God has been faithful to us, but I can hear in my spirit, since this theme was given, God is saying there is a section of the kingdom truth, of the end time truth that we have concentrated upon. And God seems to be saying to us that, fine, we have done well in this point, but there is more on the other side. Now, when you are talking about the other side, it presupposes that there is a barrier between this side and uh, that side. At this time, in the case of the Lord Jesus, the immediate barrier we can exceed is the water. There was the water. They needed to enter into the water, pass through the water to get to the other side. 
and i fully agree with the ministry of our brother yesterday that we have begun to move over but the lord is giving us as it were a word of finality and brethren one of the reasons why we need to take this convention very seriously is because if peradventure anyone does not move it could be very very costly and dangerous for you now let me exp let me explain some expression so that i will not make too much assumption now when we are talking about the end time end time vision because if you ask us as people have asked us before who are you some say we are a churchless people some say you know in the case of jesus he filled that questions from his disciples he said who do men say that i am and as he filled out the question so many responses came oh you are john the baptist you are elijah you are this and that there are many, many of us may not know people have various words to express who we are but thank god because there is no word that can be paid to us but that we are god's children we are god's sons denominationalism was never a part of the program of god it came when the church began to slip into apostasy and as the lord began to bring the church out of apostasy there are corrections of things and issues in the church that have been established that ought not so to be now end time when you're talking about the end time vision now you're talking about the mind of god that is revealed regarding the times of the end relative to the nations of the earth and to his church now so when you're talking about the end time vision you're talking about those things god has said he will accomplish relative to the nations of the earth and relative to his church now if you look at matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 from verse 3 to verse 14 the lord jesus christ there gave seven signs that will herald his second advent his return again and in those seven signs we discover that there are signs of events that will take place in the nations of the earth but there are also signs of events that will take place in the church of the lord jesus christ that's matthew chapter 24 from verse 3 to verse 14. now the lord jesus made us to know about the nations of the earth nations shall rise against nations there shall be pestilences and wars in diverse places all those ones we are seeing and we shall still see more now but on the side of the church he said something he said there shall be betrayal among brethren and then he said because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall what shall grow cold but those who shall endure unto the end these are the ones that shall be saved then another sign in the church in verse 14 it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the nations as a witness and then the end shall come now when we are talking about the end in the words of our lord jesus christ he was not speaking about the time when the earth shall be no more no he was speaking about the end relative to his program for the church the bible tells us in the book of ephesians 3 and ephesians 5 paul was revealing talking that god made known to him the mysteries in the ages past and that there are also mysteries to be unveiled in the world ages to come now let's understand that god is not a planless god there is nothing that is happening now that is taking god by surprise and as you are seated there there is nothing happening in your life 
that is taking God by surprise. For no more to him are all his works from the beginning of the ages. All things are known unto him. Now, so don't think that, hey, God, if you don't do something, Satan will just spoil your work. It can never happen. God is in control. God is in charge. God knows where things are going. And not only that he knows, the Bible says he has revealed them unto us by his spirit. He has not left us in the dark. God's children are not to behave and live like those in the world who don't have understanding. Now so, at the time of the end, there are certain things God has said he will do on the earth. One of the highlight, the summary of it is that the Lord will bring the world and the nations and the governments of the world on their knees. The reason is because the nations and the governments of the nations feel that they have solution. But we are all beginning to see that even strong nations are moving in panic. They discover they don't have solution to the problems of economy, to the problems of health, to the problems of disaster. The latest in the world now is terrorism. It has virtually brought all governments you know, on their knees. And God will allow it to continue until man and the nations shall acknowledge that they have failed and they shall call upon him. Because unto him shall every knee bow, unto him shall every tongue confess. Now what, that, that is the purpose of God in the nations. So I want to sound this, brethren, please listen. Things will not get better in the nations. That sounds scary, isn't it? But that is the word of God. Things are not going to get better. Things are going to depreciate. Economically, socially, things are going to depreciate. Until the time that he takes over whose right it is. He shall take over the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, but in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, what is the program and what is the plan that God has? Now, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8, we get to understand that the church is the instrument that determines how God relates with the nations of the earth. In any nation you get to, you can judge the progress of a nation by the progress of the church in that nation. And that's one of the reasons why we need to be on our spiritual toes in Nigeria. Brethren, as long as the church of the firstborn, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is standing right, looking to heaven, Satan can never take over Nigeria. It's not possible. You know the reason? The reason is because there are Nigeria is tied to very significant aspects of the purposes of God for this nation. There are some things I have heard God say 30 years ago about Nigeria that are beginning to come to pass. And there are some that have not come to pass. And the word of the Lord can never fall to the ground. So God will do things. But the only caution is that the church must not go to sleep. And when I'm talking about the church... I'm not even talking about the church that is living in politics. As in the days of John the Baptist, when there was so much politics and there were two high priests at the same time, Annas and Caiaphas, in-laws, and no one was ready to step down. So for compromise, they agreed that the two of them should have a joint high priesthood. And I also ask, on the day of atonement, which of them goes inside? That was darkness. So it is not that realm of the church that we are talking about that will determine the destiny of Nigeria. It is the church that is living in the light and in the purposes of God that will determine what should happen. And as we take our stand and as we stand on our feet, Satan cannot take over Nigeria. So let our hearts be at rest. It does not mean we are not going to fold our arms and we shall sleep. No. 
but as long as the church is standing properly we have enough light and the enemy can never take over the nation now so but when you are talking about the purpose of god for the church because we are moving from that of the nations to the church now is that god has a plan to restore the earth the reason is because in the book of genesis chapter 3 there was a curse upon the earth there was a curse upon man there was a curse upon woman there was a curse upon the beast at the animal kingdom so you discover that everything was under a curse but somebody will say but god you just finished creation of the heavens creating the earth how come you are causing everything the reason is because he is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity god understood that satan wanted to inject something into his program and he was not going to allow it but the bible now tells us in the book of romans that the world allowed creation to be subjected to the experience of decay the man the woman the beast and the ground because it before cre before the curse there was no thoughts and thistles coming forth from the earth but god allowed everything because he saw that he would send for a deliverer and that is a very vital program of god as we look at the book of romans chapter 8. can we look at romans chapter 8. you see we can't talk about the program of god for the time of the end without coming to this point that god has a program to redeem the earth from the bondage of corruption we have to understand this and know because it affects us and the clearer we see it the better we shall be able to guide our steps on the way now i will read from romans chapter 8 paul was writing now we thank god for a vessel like paul unto whom was revealed the mysteries of the purposes of god in ages past in ages to come so in romans chapter 8 verse 18 i'll read it says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us so paul was saying there there is a glory to be revealed in us who are the us god's own sons verse 19 he said for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of god for the creature was made subject to vanity the vanity there is a vanity of the decay that came by the reason of the cause not willingly but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god praise the name of the lord jesus now brethren listen god has he brought forth a curse but he brought it forth in hope that there shall be a recovery from that curse and right now we are witnessing every dimension of that cause coming to fullness let me state this to help us brethren so that you can understand what the lord is saying there are two major causes mentioned in the scriptures that we have to understand the bible speaks about the cause of the law the bible talks about the cause of the fall now we are told in galatians chapter 3 that christ has redeemed us from what the cause of the law what is the cause of the law the bible tells us in the old testament that when anyone was not able to live according to the tenets of the law there was a curse upon him 
So Christ came and removed that curse. But there is the curse of the fall. F A double L. We are seeing the cause of the fall around us, isn't it? Let's see, what are the aspects of the cause of the fall? It is in the sweat of your world, of your face that the world you shall eat. And for a woman, you shall travel. You shall labor to bring forth. And the Lord said, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Now, creation is still under the curse right now. If you know, the America spends so much money every year to treat for the health program. Health is a major issue. Not only in Africa, many of us in Africa will say, oh, if only I can be in America, I will like it. I won't be sick again. It's not true. There are sicknesses there that you can't even find here. Some of the new sicknesses here are because we are drifting towards their lifestyle. Now, but whether, whichever means you use, there are some aspects of this cause that are still remaining. The only thing God is doing is this. God is giving unto us who are his own the privileges of tasting of the powers of the age to come. Now, that is for us. That is our privilege. God came out, God spoke this morning, and he spoke about what he has done. He has come to heal our bodies, isn't he? But in the prophecy of Isaiah, and in so many of the prophecies of the prophets, there is a world and an age that is coming in where there shall be no more sickness. Where there shall be no more cause. That is coming. But before that time, we have the privilege by the blood of Jesus to partake of the powers of that age that the world has not entered into. That is the reason why you can go before the Lord and partake of healing by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, so, God has a program for the church. Now, it is the church of Jesus Christ is the organ, is the instrument that has been designed by God to remove this curse from the earth. Now, but if you trace the history of the church, there has been so much interjections by the enemy. As he had always attempted to interject many aspects of the program of God. But God is not disturbed. If you check the time when Moses was preserved, Pharaoh thought he had killed all the male children. But God preserved Moses. Pharaoh thought he had killed all the male children, but the Lord preserved Jesus. The red dragon is standing before the woman and the child to be void, but that child shall be cut up to God and to his throne. So God knows how to beat Satan to it, and he will beat him to it again this time around. Now, but the emphasis of this morning is this. In the church, when I'm talking about the church, I'm talking among those who have given their lives to Jesus. You see, we have come to a time that you have to define and define what you mean by the church. We have some who understand the church to mean there was a time that the understanding of a layman about the church was buildings. For example, if we were to buy this place and then maybe have it as our Sunday, Sunday place of worship and we decorate it. To some people, we are going to wear church. In their mind, we are going to that building where you have the instruments and the chairs and the camera to worship our God. That was, and God had taken time to purge us and he is still purging us out of that mind and sentiment. Now, but to the general world, anyone that answers a baptismal name is a Christian. John, Peter, Matthew, Bartholomew, 
But let us understand that in the tabernacle compartment, in the tabernacle, there are three different compartments. Entering into the tabernacle, you have four gates, symbolized by the four gospels. Anyone that does not come to God by Jesus Christ can never even be a part of his program at all. But we now have a situation where we have people, so many, who have been born again, who have even been filled with the Holy Spirit, but because of Satan's interjection of the church world with politics and all manner of things, many have stood at a place referred to as the outer court. And many Christians are just satisfied with that. And all manner of things and works of the flesh take place. Let me paint a little picture of an average church system today. To many church systems today, sin is not a big deal. And I'm saying that because I have been in counseling with a number of people there. Sin is not a big deal. You know, I'm, I'm talking about politics and, you know, sidetracking one another. It's not a big deal. All these things are there. Now, but God has a very important purpose of delivering creation from corruption. My brethren, he cannot hand it over the church at that level. It's not possible. A church that is living for its own self. A church that is busy with money making. A church that is busy with its own programs. A church that is busy... Do you know, I was shocked one day when I heard about somebody, a bishop in the church, who sent, in one of the denominations, who sent hired killers after somebody else in the church. Hired killer. We were in a particular place for mission sometime, one of the countries in the West Coast, and we are told somebody came to us, Brother Popola was there, and we were mini counseling somebody who was, you know, a pastor in a church. God had dealt with him, and in the church denomination where he was, his assistant put charm and he stepped upon it. And his leg began to decay. We ministered to him there. The person who was supposed to be his assistant did what? Put charm in the church or in the supposed church. Do you think, as a human being, a purpose as great as redeeming creation from corruption, you will hand it over to that church? No, God will not. Why am I going into all this? Many have, uh, have said, have accused us that we are dividing the church. But brethren, the truth is this. There is a church out of the church. There is a body of people who know God, who have left all to follow him, who have been called out of the corruption in the church. God will never leave his purposes in what we see presently in the ecclesia. He will not. So, God has decided to call out of the church a body of people referred to as overcomers. Let's look at the book of Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapters 2 and 3, seven different times the Lord Jesus Christ referred to to the overcomers. Now, Revelation chapters 2 and 3 contains the, uh, the message that the Lord Jesus Christ sent unto the seven churches in Asia Minor. To Ephesus, to Thyatira, to Pergamos, and to the seven churches. So, the Revelations 2 and 3 contain the mind of God about the state of the local assemblies. Now, but one thing very paramount in the whole of Revelations 2 and 3 was that in each of the seven churches, the Lord Jesus Christ will take time to first of all address the church, analyze them as he saw them, and then he will talk to them, 
generally and then you will end up by addressing overcomers let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 let's read verse 1 it says unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write this thing said be that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks now those seven golden candlesticks speak of the local church the candlestick is symbolic of the local church in the new testament now verse 3 says i know thy works and thy labor thy patience and how you cannot bear them that are evil it went on and on and on verse 6 it says but this thou hast that thou hated the deeds of the nicolaitans which i also hate now look at verse 7 in verse 7 having analyzed them and giving them the states of affairs of that church in verse 7 it says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches the word churches there does not mean jesus has many churches it is one church but the word has to do with the local assemblies he that had an ear let him hear what the spirit of god is saying unto the local assemblies to him that overcometh will i give to eat of the tree of life so we see there that jesus christ and if you look at verse 11 after speaking to the church in smyrna he said he that had an ear let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be heard so we discover that the lord jesus christ had a word for every one of the local assemblies but as he spoke to the local assemblies he had a word for a people in every local assembly that he called the overcomers to him that were overcoming now the principle of a church within a church did not begin in the new testament if you check the by the word of god from the old testament anytime the purposes of god were at the risk of falling apart he will raise up a people that will preserve his purpose and that is how god has preserved his purpose from time to time from age to age so when israel you know took pride because they took pride in the fact that they were abraham's children jeremiah spoke to them he said don't begin to take pride and say this is the temple of the lord god says look i can raise down this place and when john the baptist came he said don't begin to say to yourselves we are abraham's children because god is able of these stones to do what to raise up a seed for abraham to what fulfill his purpose so as it were they were saying well where god has a covenant with abraham he can't do anything with us even if we sin if we have to come back he has no choice but john was telling them it's not so god is able of stones to work to raise up sin the most important thing listen is for god to achieve his purpose god can dispense with any man at any time no man can ever hold the purposes of god to ransom what god preserves primarily is his purpose and anyone that joins himself to the purpose of the lord will also be preserved and that is the reason why you must be very cautious and careful that in whatever you do whatever decision you take in your life you don't work against the purposes of god now so god you know decided in the old testament he will preserve the people let's look at the book of isaiah isaiah was a prophet that was raised up at the time when darkness set in to the life of his of god's people if you look at the book of isaiah chapter one let's look at isaiah chapter one in isaiah chapter one we see that so much of darkness had set in when you study the prophets study the circumstances under which they gave their prophecy 
it will help you to be able to expound and appreciate what God is saying. Now look at how the book of Isaiah began. It will make you to appreciate what was the state of the Lord's people at that time. In verse 2, verse 1, it says Isaiah 1.1, 1, 1, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So, what was the situation when Isaiah began to minister? It was the time when god was disappointed in the people that he was nourishing he said i have nourished and brought up children and they have what they have rebelled against me he went as far as saying even an animal knows the world who has done it good he said but israel does not know in verse 4 he says ah sinful nation now a lot of times when i read the book of isaiah and I look at God's own nation. God's own nation is the church. The people that have come out of darkness and accepted his way, his lordship, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I look at it, and especially from time to time when I come across certain ugly news, things that ought not so to be in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the ecclesia. I remember why Isaiah came. Isaiah was sent to fulfill a mission at a particular time in the life and history of Israel. Now, but judgment began to come from verse 7. But look at verse 9. I want us all to read verse 9 together. I want us to see that at every time, God has always preserved his purpose. In verse 9, can we read it together? I want to go. Except the Lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So at that time, the purposes of God were at a threat. Who threatened the purposes of God? Was it Satan? Not exactly. Those who threatened the purposes of God were his own people that did not continue in the world of the covenant. Who are those threatening the purposes of God right now? It's not Satan directly. It is Satan indirectly. But who is threatening the purposes of God? It is we who are not working in the covenant. We are the ones threatening the purposes of God. The church is threatening the purposes of God. But God will never allow his purposes to fall apart. He will never leave himself without light and witness. So, in verse 9, Isaiah understood the concepts of the remnant in the purposes of God. He said, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We would have been like Sodom. It means things will have been very bad. You remember what Sodom was and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah were so bad that God had to rain down what? fire upon them. He said, if not that God raised a very small remnant, Israel and the work all the investments of God will have come to naught. Brethren, there are times that it gets that bad that God does not have many people to rely upon. He didn't talk about remnants. He said what? A very small remnant. That is why you don't have to be disturbed if at times you are a lone voice in a dark place. There are times that the purposes of God in a place it may be a fellowship in a nation may be sustained by not many people by what he refers to as well a very small remnant that's not a large number anyway 
So God's purposes in the days of Isaiah was preserved by a very small remnant. Who are the remnants? Now, the remnants also are the overcomers. But we have various words that describe and qualify them. But he's talking about the same set of people in their dispositions. Now, the remnants, right from the Old Testament to the New Testament, are God's own covenant people who decide to hold on to God and the covenant irrespective of what every other person does. Even when others decide to forsake the covenant, even when others decide to go away, God always has a people that hold on to him and to their covenant with him. So Israel always had a people who held on to the covenant irrespective of what everybody does. You know, we have some of us. We can only do well when the elders are pursuing us. There are some people that can only live right when they can see others living right. But the remnants of God are remnants because they are constant in their relationship with God. Wherever they are, whatever happens about them does not concern, does not affect them. They have cut a covenant, they have cut, entered into a relationship with God and they live on the terms of that relationship. These are the remnants of God. The people that stay with God when others go away. Now, if we look at the book of Romans, let's look at the book of Romans, chapter 11, and we see what brother Paul had to say concerning the times that we are in. And what brother Paul says now gives us a spiritual principle by which God operates in the preservation of his plans and purposes. God has a principle by which he operates. And the principle is this. If the generality of people that he calls will not do his will, he will zero it to a few people that are ready to do anything to do his will. That's the principle by which God operates. We have seen it in the Old Testament. Let's look at what Brother Paul had to say. In the book of Romans chapter 11. Now in verse 1. It says, I say then, Have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. What you know what the scripture said of Elijah, how he make an intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what said the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of power. Shall we read verse 5 together? Want to go? Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And we say, Amen. So, we see the principle by which God operates. The principle is this. Whenever his purposes are at a threat, he often raises up a people. Now, the scripture used a very powerful word. It says, I have the word, I have reserved unto myself. Meaning that God had used his own power to ensure that his purposes will not fall apart. And how does he do it? He focuses on a people whose hearts are straight to him and he works upon them. He rebukes the devil concerning them and he pours his life into them. This one makes sure that the purposes of God never fall apart. So let me now come to where we are going. In the church, which we know as the ecclesia today, when I'm talking about the ecclesia, I'm talking about the general church of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many things are going on in the church of Jesus Christ that ought not to be. 
there are some things going on in the church of Jesus Christ that are not printable but God has decided to rescue his purposes and how is God rescuing his purposes in the church it is by ensuring that he turns to a people in the church listen scattered through all the denominations because in revelation chapters 2 and 3 the overcomers were scattered through all the seven churches including the laodicean church so what god does he turns to these people while the general church is busy with his own programs and politics and fanfare he speaks a word into their hearts and they have a relationship with him now at this time of the end because the purposes of god for the age of the church are coming to conclusion it's very important for us to know that the purposes of god for the church age are coming to conclusion at this time that we are in right now and because of that god cannot and will not allow his remnants to remain in religious establishments where the seed in them shall be corrupted and that is where we come to revelation chapter 18 where john saw in chapter 17 the vision of the apostate church and in chapter 18 he heard a voice he said babylon is falling it's falling it's become the habitation of unclean spirits and of every hating bird he said and i heard another word saying unto me come out of her my people and be not partaker of their plagues so at this time that we are in a vital aspect of the purposes of god in the church is that god is calling out faithful serious and sincere children of his out of the various denominational setup we can never compromise this because god doesn't compromise it god says why are you looking for the living among the dead we have so many living souls in the congregations of the dead but you know the danger you can never operate above the seal that is over you so god says why are you looking for the living among the dead so the living must separate from the congregation of the dead that is the emphasis of the cry of the trumpet come out of her now we have come thus far in explaining this now god has a purpose to accomplish at the time of the end there are some aspects of the purposes that pertain to the earth to the nations to bring them to their knees there are some aspects of the purposes that pertain to the church but a vital aspect is that god wants to recover the earth from the bondage of corruption that work of recovery has to be by the church but the church in a state of apostasy cannot serve that purpose god turns a body of remnants now so from now on we want to uh, concentrate on this body of remnants referred to as overcomers who are, why are they called overcomers they are called overcomers because they are deliberately living their lives to overcome sin to overcome satan and to overcome the world it's very important for us to know that god's people who are referred to as overcomers in each of the seven local expressions in revelations 2 and 3 are called overcomers because they are overcoming sin daily they are overcoming satan daily and they overcoming the world daily first john chapter 2 verse 15 is still relevant today my brethren love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world everything the lust of the eyes 
the lust of the flesh and the pride of life they are not of the father but they are what of the world and the world shall pass away and all the lost no matter how good they look but those that do the will of god shall abide forever i want to be among them that do the will of god my brethren honestly speaking the world is decaying more every day but sad to say many decades are happening in the church of jesus christ but god has now called out a people but you know what the people that god now calls out as overcomers as remnants are not called out to now form another organization they are not they are called to be a spiritual body of people who have before them as focus god and his eternal purpose every other thing to them is secondary these are the people that god has zeroed his purposes upon somebody can say well where are you see that Italy, it was in this city of Enugu. i don't know many people were in Enugu then it was in this city of Enugu i was ministering in 1989 or 1990 and somebody stood up during question time he said i was doing the work of satan the adversary he said brother you are doing the work of satan because you are dividing the church because we said that god is calling a church from the church so we are trying to prove it from the old testament that god always has a principle of preserving a remnant unto himself at times it gets as bad as becoming a very small remnant so that we do not become as sodom and we do not become as gomorrah so that the purposes of god do not fall apart now god now zeroing on this body of people that he calls overcomers or remnants let me say this god calls us remnants or overcomers not because we are perfect but because we love to be perfect please know that god does not call us overcomers and he does not call us remnants because we are perfect but because we love to be perfect and that is the reason why anyone whose heart is not set upon god cannot be said to be a body a part of the body of overcomers well, let me say something about this body of overcomers there is no earthly register that contains their names so don't come after the fellowship after this service and say brother color now that you are talking about overcomers put down my name as one of them i don't have what it takes these are the church of the firstborn that are written in heaven there is no earthly register that contains their names and the fact that you have come to a new convention does not make you a part of the a part of the remnants the fact that you are at a new convention does not make you an overcomer for known unto god are all his works from the beginning of the ages for the things that are not seen by men are what are seen by god but coming to a forum like this gives you a great privilege of being a part of the overcomers when you are in a forum like this you will hear things that you don't normally hear you will see things that you normally don't see and god help you your heart can be touched you can decide to leave everything like the apostles and follow him the bible tells us that when jesus christ was beginning his ministry he saw peter simon and his brother they were mending their nets he said follow me the bible says they left the sheep they left the nets and they followed him go and check all that jesus christ called to follow him they all had to leave something very important to follow him james and john were with their father and the servants on the sea washing their nets 
and Jesus Christ went to them follow me the Bible says they led their necks they led their father they led the servants and they followed him and then he went to Matthew at the time he was a tax collector a customs, a customs officer and you know what that means it's not only now that customs officers are making money even since then they are making money and he went to him he said what well, follow me the bible says matthew left the table of customs with lucration behind it and he did what well. he followed him my brethren you will be required to leave something tangible to follow him if you are not ready then you cannot claim to be a part of the overcomers for if there is anything that is standing as lord in your heart more than him then you cannot be qualified that was why peter at a time asked jesus he said we have left all to follow you so what are we going to have we have left everything everything and jesus christ diverted his attention from the physical to the spiritual probably peter was expecting jesus to say yeah peter you've done so well when i drive away the romans you will be the prime minister but he told him you that have left all to follow me now your reward shall be in the regeneration the word regeneration means when i begin to make all things new when i begin to make all things new you also shall sit with me on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel now brethren god's purpose is thus that he has a plan to manifest his sons but these sons they will manifest are those that he will appear to who will consume his glory and he will release them unto creation now the reason why god is asking us to come over to the other side i perceive is this let's go back to matthew mark chapter 4. now in mark chapter 4 i want us to look at what happened what happened before this scripture of our thing and what happened after it before this mark chapter 4 verse 35 we have read from chapter 4 that jesus christ you know was laying foundation and laying to the people principles of the kingdom of god he was talking to them in parables and in parables and in parables it was telling them the principles of god's kingdom but in chapter 5 the bible verse 1 the bible says and they came over onto the other side of the sea and the first encounter as our brother shared yesterday was a demonstration of the life and the power of god in delivering the man of gathering now thereafter we find that Jesus Christ went to heal, he was requested to heal Jairus' daughter. And while he was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter, the woman with the issue of blood met him. And he ministered. Now, what am I trying to say? Before this time, he said, let us get over to the other side. He was speaking and laying principles of the kingdom of god but after it he was what practicing the life of the kingdom so before it he was laying foundation and talking to them about principles my brethren listen please listen what is god saying to us thus far we have dwelt on the principles of the kingdom of god let's cross over to the other side and practice the kingdom of god that's what the lord is saying unto us because the kingdom of God is not in war, but war is in power. It began with the man of gathering with 12,000 demons. He delivered him. He was going to heal Jairus' daughter. The woman with the issue of blood met him. Now, I think God is saying to us, enough of theories and principles. 
let's get to action the reason is because the reason for our calling listen brethren the reason for the calling of the remnants and the overcomers at this time is not for them to have house fellowships house fellowship is a means to the end it is not the end it is not for them to have convention convention is a means to the end it is not the end the reason why God is gathering overcomers and remnants at this time is that he might have a body on the earth through whom he shall deliver creation from the bondage of corruption. This is the reason why we are called. If you come to convention, it is to lead us to that place. If we leave Babylon and gather in our fellowship setting, it is to lead us to that point. And so we discover we must never lose focus of the reason why God has called us out. He has called us out for a divine purpose. In our various fellowships, thank God we are here from various people, places, from even outside Nigeria. Why has God called us out? We must not be another denominational setting. He has called us out not just to sit down and enjoy fellowship. In that wise, even the things that happen in our daily gatherings matter a lot. Brethren, we must ensure that the activities that take place when we gather are things that focus on the purpose of God why he has called us out we must not gather together uh -huh, and then to be talking story uh -huh, okay you 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 okay what do you think what do you think what do you think about that bible and me i don't allow i don't agree uh -huh, okay okay you, you, you share your dream this is your dream self i don't agree with it is that why that's not why we are called brethren there is a purpose at this convention, God will make that purpose clearer unto us. I perceive in my spirit that many of our local expressions have lost focus. Many of our local expressions have lost focus and God will give us a new focus. God will touch our eyes. There are many things that do not partake to this understanding. That do not partake unto the sonship life. Now, we have to be purged of them. The Bible tells us of Jesus Christ in the book of Acts chapter 1 that when he rose again from the dead he was around for 40 days isn't it? But there was a 40 day ministry of Jesus Christ was very very crucial. The Bible said during those 40 days he spoke of things that pertain to the kingdom of God. When we gather together in our fellowships we must speak of things that pertain to the kingdom of God that is ahead of us. We must not talk stories and be involved with politics. Let's sit down, brethren. This is the other side we are going to. God is saying to us, enough of theories and principles. Let's get over onto the place of action. That's what I perceive God is saying unto us. And he has come to empower us. He has come to anoint us. He has come to refresh us so that we can be able to bring this to pass let me say this before i begin to round up there is a move of god that is ahead of this church if we do not say it it does not complete the end time vision there is a move of god brethren that is ahead of us and one of the reasons why god has gathered us is because we are being prepared for this mighty move of God on this earth we've talked about the manifestation of the sons of God let me give some witnesses that can help us I discover that when hope is not clear all manner of unnecessary things happen in the life of a person when you don't have anything you are aspiring for and one of the reasons why many people after retirement die on time is because after imagine somebody working with shell or working with chevron lived a life and maybe you've been busy working on computers and then you retire and you go to your village where there's no light there's no water and we are all the people that you meet with at 8, 10 a.m. in the morning. You that you will suit up and go to work. You are playing drafts with the villagers. 
in the market square. You will die on time now. That's what happens. So, we must understand that except we keep the hope of our calling before us, we shall depreciate and fall out of the way. So, we must keep ourselves fresh. Now, there is another visitation that is ahead of the church. I'm so clear about that, brethren. I came across a material I'm talking about from the written scriptures that testifies to it. Because let me talk about the written scripture. In the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 20 and verse 21 Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. And then he spoke about Christ. He says and I think it was uh, not the day of Pentecost when the beauty at the beautiful gate after that man was healed. He was telling them about the purposes of God for his church and why God was calling them out. He says, and God shall send Jesus. That's Acts 3, 20, 21. Whom the heavens will retain until the times of the restoration or restitution of all things as God has spoken through the mouth of all his prophets. So what was he saying? But Peter was saying, you see, when God gathers you people out of Judaism into the faith in Christ, God has a program in mind. And that program is that he will send Jesus. The heavens will receive Jesus and retain him until the time that he will be released. He will send him. And it will be the time when God is restituting all things. What do you mean by restitution of all things? In Acts chapter 3 verse 21. Now it speaks about the time when God begins to put things back into their former position as he ordained them to be. We are talking about Romans chapter 8 about the manifestation of the sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God is to put things into the place that God ordained it to be. As he had in mind. And if you look at creation, there are so many things that are not where they should be. And God, at the time of the closing of the age of the church, shall put them where they ought to be. But God is beginning with his church. Because if the church is the instrument God shall use to restore the earth, then the church must be restored. So the restoration of the church begins in the separation of the remnants that shall be God's instruments in restoring the earth. Now, there is an anointing that is coming upon us. Anointing is coming upon a people that are waiting for God. The book, let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 9. In Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, I'll read verse 28. It says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So he has appeared the first time. And when he came the first time, what was his primary program? To take away sin and to deal with sin. When he comes again the second time, what is the emphasis of his program? It is not to deal with sin, but to bring full salvation. This is the program that is before us. Now also there is an anointing that is ahead of the church. But as it was in the early reign, this anointing, listen, is not coming upon everyone in the church. Did the early rain come upon everyone? In everyone, there were 500 people on the Mount of Olives. Jesus Christ told them to go and wait and tarry. Only 120 got to the Mount of go got to the upper room. Only those who were in the upper room were baptized with a fresh anointing. There is a fresh anointing that is coming. This fresh anointing shall only be upon those who are waiting 
right now who are reconciling themselves back unto God these are the people that God will bring his anointing upon so let's know means what's about it there is a coming anointing upon this church upon the church that is waiting for him now I remember I read the material in 1937 a woman gave a prophecy I'll give her two or three witnesses in the church age in 1937 there's a woman called Mary Amy McPherson she was the one that God used to back the move that now has become the first square gospel church this woman in 1937 gave a prophecy I read and she said there is a coming move of God in the church there is an anointing that is coming it has never been the time before it shall be at the time that the church age is closing William Branham in the 1930s 1940s had a visitation of God and gave a prophecy about a visitation of God that shall come upon the church at the time when the age of the church will close up then Smith Google Sword. I also came across a prophecy by Smith Google Sword. Smith Google Sword gave a prophecy that before the church age will round up, there shall come an anointing to demonstrate Christ in power and glory as it has never been known in the age of the church. Kenneth Hagin gave a prophecy at the 1980 camp meeting and he said, There is a new anointing that is coming. He said God told him he would not be a part of it but that it will come before the age of the church will close we can go on and on you know one thing that is very significant about all these people I've mentioned they are all ministers of God that operated in the supernatural and all of them testified that what is coming is far beyond what they saw in their ministries at those times God raised up lone champions but at this anointing god shall raise a plural body of people that his anointing and his power shall come upon them this is what is coming and it shall be battered by an anointing now let me last of all share this one there was a revelation that has shaken my life for years a brother called tommy hicks i don't know how many of us know about him tommy hicks lived in the 20th century about the same time you know of the latter rain revival he lived a bit after it tommy hicks spent some time with god we learned that he took a 40-day fast and he was under a culvert seeking the face of the lord and the outcome of all those seeking the lord god gave him a vision a few of you may have come across it but let's describe that vision and let you know what I understand by it and how it affects what is happening now. Tommy Hicks said he saw a giant. He saw a giant on the floor. But that giant was very mighty. But it was lying down dead, like, a, like something dead. And all manner of creatures were crawling upon that giant. He saw reptiles crawling up. And the giant was so helpless and could not do anything about all the creatures crawling upon him he said then he saw two hands he didn't see a body he saw two hands upon that giant on the floor then from those two hands he saw something like oil that dropped from each of the two hands and this oil dropped upon that giant he said the minute that oil dropped all the creatures and creepy things disappeared then that giant rose up when that giant rose up, it was a very mighty giant. But that giant rose up because of the oil that dropped upon him. Then he saw that that giant later on split, began to disintegrate and split into so many members. And the member that that giant split into happened to be individual brethren, believers. He said he now saw that these people that came out of this giant, that this giant, this giant now became many members. This was a vision about 50 60 years ago he said he became many members and he saw that in these members that came forth from this giant they were not ordinary people i mean they were 
super spiritually speaking, they were not ordinary people, but physically they were ordinary people. He said that was what surprised him. It did not see many mighty people among them. He said he saw bricklayers, carpenters, street sweepers among these people. He said, and what he saw was that there was a power they had that had never been known. That they went all over the world preaching the gospel with signs and wonders. And that no one could stop them. In that vision, because at the time the vision came, was when Russia was under the iron curtain. He said he saw that many of these people went into Islamic enclaves. They did not take visa. They went in out of the body experience. That means they were transported. They were translated. And they went, they did not use visa. They went to Russia, they went to Saudi Arabia, and they preached the gospel. And they came out of the vision. Brethren, that vision is very significant to this time of the end. That giant is talking about the church. Helpless. Crawling, no, all manner, those creeping things talk about all manner of evil spirits that are prowling upon the church. And the things happening in the church now cannot be any other thing but activities of satanic spirits. But an anointing is coming upon us. When this oil shall drop upon this giant, the giant shall rise up. That giant is already rising. Because I know that by the time this anointing has done its work, we shall not lie on the ground again. But very significantly, this giant shall split into many members. So at this time, God is not after one man show. It's after a plural body of people. And then let nobody write himself out. Write himself off. Because he said, among these people are ordinary people in the terms of man. Even if anything, I think if you are an important personality, you need to see God very well to be a part of it. I'm not saying you cannot be. The Bible says you see your calling, brethren. Not many mighty are called. Not many wise are called. Not that God cannot use them, but many of them, the things that they have become has become a lot unto them. Is it the money they have? The position they have? The education they have? Whatever material things they have gathered now begins to stand against them. But it says, fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What you need to do is to make up your mind that in as much as there is a new anointing coming, I shall be a part of that anointing. The reason why we are at this convention is not because we must have a convention. It is because God wants us to speak of things that pertain to the coming glory. When you gather in your fellowships, brethren, don't talk stories and don't tell tales. Talk about the things that pertain to the coming anointing. Let the brethren, let the elders of the churches keep the brethren fresh. Visit the, the, the Lord. Let the Lord visit his people. Seek the Lord in your closet. There should never be a time, brethren, when God's children will gather and there will not be a word from the Lord. Don't sit together and say, okay, you share your dream. Eh? Eh? So you are talking about me. Okay, that is the reason why you did not greet me the other time. And by the time you finish, you have not had fellowship. Preach the word. In season and out of season. Speak of the things that pertain to the glory that is coming. Because as we feed upon it, it said, then they that fear the Lord spoke of one to to another. And the Lord heard it and heard him. And what will happen? A book of remembrance shall be opened unto them. Let the church world be going on with his politics and with his fancy and jamboree. Let us begin to feed on the things that pertain to the purposes and the glory that is ahead of us. This is what will keep your house fellowship alive. This is what will keep your local assembly alive. This is what will keep you as a person alive because darkness is coming upon the earth much more than we can see. And one of the things that will keep us alive in the spirit is the glory that is ahead of us. I want to round up on this note. What is the mind of God for us at times like this? 
seeing that there is such a great purpose before us what is the mind of God concerning us how are we to live what is the Lord saying unto us he's saying let us come over move over onto the other side what manner of persons ought we to be what character of lifestyle should we have now let's look at the book of hebrews this way we're going to round up hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 now for the sake of time i will just direct us so that we can go and do some more work hebrews chapter 12 tells us what we should be doing there are four things i want to mention that we should be doing right now and hebrews chapter 12 contains three at least three of those things that we should be doing as we await this new anointing as we await this glory that is promised us verse one wherefore see we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin we thus so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith brethren the times we are in now it's not a time for nonsense it's not a time for the works of the flesh it's a serious time i'll just try to atomize from this scripture four things i designed we should be doing number one we should keep fresh with the prophetic vision we should be fresh with it there is a vision of the reason why we came out of the glory that is ahead of us of a new anointing and of the activities on the other side we should keep ourselves fresh with it now listen what you eat matters a lot to your health what you eat spiritually matters a lot to your spiritual health if you eat good spiritual food you will look very healthy spiritually let's not miss what's about it if as a local assembly we are not spiritually healthy it is because we are not eating well and that there's no other way to it if a local church is eating well then you are going to be healthy now but we discover that some of us have eaten things that are not necessary for our health you know even in the physical there are so many junks we need that our bodies do not require to be healthy so much of this ice cream in fact thank god it can be said publicly america now is putting a lot of constraints upon fast food industries because they discover that the children are just big but not healthy there are many christians that are just big but not spiritually healthy but eat the right kind of food as a child of god now is the need for us to feed on the prophetic word feeding on the prophetic word is one of the things we should be doing now secondly seeking the lord without distraction number one feed on the prophetic word the word of prophecy that battle the end time visitation the word of prophecy that speaks of the things that god will do feed upon it it will keep us alive because when you know great things are ahead of you you will not meddle in unnecessary things number three is keep yourself unspotted by the world keep yourself unspotted by the world now with the i divide the book of hebrews into three segments for this verses one to four tell us to keep our eyes on jesus make sure we deal with the weights and the sins keep ourselves fresh with what is ahead of us because the vision of the hour is christ christ in you the hope of glory so the second one is seek the lord without distraction there are so many distractions around us we all know it what i shall eat 
what I shall drink, how shall I be clothed. But I came mention yesterday, what shall happen to my future? The Lord says, we should seek him. Present these things to him, but don't allow them to distract you. There is a goal. God has called you out because he's raising a body of remnants that he will work upon and they shall be instruments for a new anointing. And with that new anointing, they shall deliver creation from the bondage of corruption. Now, so keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's verses 12 to 17. We read about the case of Esau. Esau, who for a morsel of meat, sold his birthright. God is saying to us, you have a birthright by your covenant with me. Don't sell that birthright. Don't let anything take away from you your faith. Then lastly, design the arrangement of God in his house. God has an arrangement for his house. This is God's house. It is not my house. It's not your house. He determines how this house should be like. When you go back to your fellowships, God determines how things should run in your fellowship. It is not the way you want. It is the way God wants. When we keep ourselves in these four things, then we shall be candidates for the waiting anointing. There's one of them I will expand more upon. And it is number one, of keeping ourselves fresh with the new anointing, with the prophetic word. Now, I want to say something emphatically. I want to be practical. I recognize that when we are talking about local expressions, we are talking about places where God's people meet. Huh? We are God's people meet together to fellowship. But let us admit that in the church universally, there are five-fold ministries. Now, let me tell us about ministries in the church. Every local church, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 8, is endowed with certain ministries. At least there are seven ministries from Romans 12, 4 to 8 that are to be alive in every local church, to keep that local church alive. But in the church of Jesus Christ, universally, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 tells us that there are ministries whose ministries cut across boundaries of local expressions. These ones are referred to as the gifts of men. Men that God has given in answer to the prayer of the church. Now, we have them there, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers. Now, the problem the church world has had is that this has become titles. You now have someone who say, I am apostle so, so, and so. I am evangelist so, and so, and so. But that does not rub away the fact that the life and the ministry of the fivefold ministry will bring the church to a full estate whereby we will be able to receive the coming anointing. Brethren, the anointing that is coming will not come upon a people until we attain a level in the spirit. I call it fullness. The church must come to maturity. Particularly the overcomer church. The people, the remnant that God has set aside must be mature. They must come up in the spirit. Now, these people being mature, you can say they come up to fullness. Brethren, if we do not come to fullness, the anointing will not come. Acts chapter 2 tells us, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the anointing came. Now, while they were waiting, the 120 of them with the women, they were waiting in the upper room. But when they, are, they were ready, the anointing came. There is a spiritual phenomenon of readiness for the anointing. We have to be ready. Now, in making us ready, God has set in the church five-fold ministries. Why am I talking? Did the Lord minister to me to say this, brethren? Now, there are some local expressions that do not have what it takes to keep the people going for a long time. But don't rob yourself of ministries available in the church. If you look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, it says God has set some in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, 
So the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. It didn't say in the King James Version there's a little error there. After the saints, there's a comma. That comma should be removed. If you read newer translations, that comma is removed. Because King James Version says, for the perfection of the saints, comma, for the work of the ministry, comma, for the edification of the body of Christ. Now, it is not the fivefold ministry that will do the work of the ministry. But the fivefold ministry are to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry until we all come to a perfect man, a mature man, unto the unity of the faith, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Brethren, listen. Not every local assembly has what it takes. But every local assembly can have what it takes. Let the church 